Hey guys, I'm Keith Habersberger, and I know you were expecting me to binge some garbage food right now, but I just want to celebrate the new year. Welcome to 2021. <laughs> We have solved the pandemic, we have solved climate change, and we even got everyone to admit that there really is not gonna be a good solution for straws ever. Paper, plastic, metal, they're all bad. <laughs> they're all bad. We did it, right? It, it's just, and we're filming in December, so I actually don't know if we, we did it or not. Is that not what happened? We didn't fix it, it's the same. We're just using Twizzlers as straws now. Okay, anyway, now that we've definitely turned the corner, let's take a moment to look back at the absolute nightmare that was 2020. This was definitely one of the worst years on record to top off one of the worst half decades, and that is saying something. In 2019, the Amazon rainforest burned while the US abandoned Syrian Kurds. In 2018, we triggered a trade war and left the Iran nuclear deal. And in 2017, this sea turtle died after eating 915 coins. Straws and coins? Well, why don't we just make Shredder the head of the Save the Ocean Society? Oh wait, we already have. And just like the rest of the world, it was a difficult year for YouTube. They even canceled YouTube Rewind, a thing we all love to hate. <laughs> so while some YouTubers are still having irresponsible and dangerous gatherings during a pandemic to uphold the tradition of dare me, bro, dare me, dare me, I'll do it, I swear. We canceled the tradition that's done remotely and won't get anyone sick. Honestly, if you're an influencer, you have absolutely no excuse for ignoring social distancing this holiday season. It's not like you're my great aunt Carol who doesn't understand that you don't need to type dear Mr. Google every time you do a web search. Our literal job is to communicate remotely with millions of strangers. We can absolutely do that with our friends and family for the holidays while still enjoying some soggy bread out of the asshole of Benjamin Franklin's favorite bird. No, seriously, it was his favorite bird. And he was right, turkeys are the most American of the birds. They're not very pretty, they can't fly because they're too fat, and if they know the president, they can get pardoned for their involvement in Turkey. Several scandals and feuds were in the news this year from YouTube stars like Shane Dawson, Jake Paul, Jeffree Star, James Charles, Toddy Westbrook, and Tinky Winky of the Teletubbies. Ooh la la. And it wasn't just individual YouTubers. Amid complaints of racial insensitivity, pay disparity, and a toxic work culture, 10 of the 13 members of Bon Appetit's Test Kitchen quit the magazine's popular video series. So why does this keep happening? And why is it such a defining part of the YouTube culture? Well, let's start at the beginning. So YouTube first officially launched in February 2005 as a dating website, but it generated little interest. <laughs> so much so that the founders were so desperate for content, they started taking out ads offering to pay women $20 to upload videos, which is actually a better monetization rate than most first time uploaders get today. But by paying women to put up videos and lure men sounds like something that like RedTube would do, which shouldn't be confused with YouTube Red, where you pay to avoid ads of women on dating sites. And also YouTube Red was rebranded as YouTube Premium, which is basically them making like TV quality content exclusive to YouTube, which is different from YouTube TV, which is just very mediocre cable, which by the way, if you wanna know, you can't use your in-laws passwords to log into it because it requires a monthly login from the owner's IP address, so f me, I guess I will watch The Bachelor the day later. Content was so scarce in the first few days that developers began posting their own videos just to fill the space. Here's YouTube co-founder Jaweth Kareem in the first ever YouTube video. All right, so here we are in front of the uh, elephants. And the cool thing about these guys is that, is that they have really, really, really long um, fronts. Okay, so this video is part of YouTube lore, and it wasn't until this week that I realized that guy is one of the original YouTube founders. That's insane. That's like if the first Yelp review was by John T. Yelp, and it said, five stars for Yelp. I just can't Yelp myself. 
After monetization, the most successful channel creators did whatever generated views, something that's still very much a part of our DNA. And hey, I do it too. You think we wanna put our faces on every thumbnail? We do it because that's what gets the clicks. It's your fault. It's a strategy as old as Edward Munch's The Scream. That painting has over 10 million clicks. I don't want it either. You're the one who made me do this. I'm just, I'm just the monster, but you're Dr. Frankenstein. You hear me? You're the Frankenstein. Anyway, make sure to smash that like button and ring that bell. Click to subscribe. 15 years and hundreds of billions of views later, we ended up where we are now. This platform has had immense global impact and changed how we interact with the world. Before YouTube, you had to buy a pirated DVD of a movie you wanted to see and it was someone filming it in the theater with a camcorder, but now you just click on a two hour video that turns out to be a very long still of the movie that you wanted to watch with some confusing audio underneath. And honestly, I just thought that Mary Poppins was trying to be meta. But can we talk about Mary Poppins for a second? Nobody wanted a sequel, Mary. We don't want to learn new songs about chores. Why can't you just do what ABBA does and let us sing the same songs over and over and over again? You're right. It is meant to be a trilogy. I'm thrilled, I'm buckled in, let's take off together. Cause you know, okay, let's get back to it. So as viewership on YouTube grew, people started regularly vlogging and sharing their lives online and it became the epitome of reality TV. And the thing that makes reality TV so watchable are the messy fights and the drama. I truly cannot believe that I'm about to bring up what I'm going to bring up, but Grayson is going on camera shortly to finally tell the world how you tried to molest him and touch him in his sleep and made him uncomfortable for months, you sick mother I knew Jeffrey was lying because the twins were two of the first people to call me and make sure that I was okay. I've lost over a year of my life terrified of social media. I did not make my video because of vitamins. I made it as a result of all of the poisonous lies that were fed to me by Shane Dawson and Jeffree Star. I know there's a lot of people waiting for me to address the situation. Now, I didn't try to take anyone down. I'm not a villain in a movie. No. Of course, people make mistakes. And some YouTubers and organizations have taken genuine responsibility for their actions, but for others, the constant controversy isn't an unintended misstep, but the foundation on which they base their whole careers. The built-in reward system of this whole setup encourages us to amplify the shock value of content. It's what we all do, to some extent, in order to make our livings and stay relevant and interesting. I myself have worn a giant diaper in public, been electrocuted, stranded in shark infested waters, had my prostate checked on camera, and we even recreated the campaigns of some of these controversial beauty YouTubers. But to be clear, I was only aroused doing one of those things. It was a good baby. Keith's a good baby. YouTube has said its recommendations drive over 70% of the more than 1 billion hours people spend watching videos each day, making it one of the world's most influential algorithms. And that much power and influence has some very real world consequences. But YouTube doesn't just provide a platform. Its artificial intelligence amplifies sensational content, sometimes with terrible consequences some of these unsubstantiated claims that were once left on the periphery of politics are now gaining traction and becoming mainstream beliefs. Turns out, as YouTube's algorithms try to keep you online, they do so by nudging you from the mainstream content to the fringes of wild conspiracy theories. There does seem to be a systematic and significant migration of users from these milder communities to these more extreme channels. Have you ever noticed that your searches on YouTube often wind up suggesting provocative content? Videos that entice you to watch more and more? This is what social media researchers call the rabbit hole effect. And I'm sure you've all experienced what those researchers are describing. It's honestly not that difficult to fall down one of these YouTube rabbit holes and end up a million miles from where you started. For example, when I did a search of Kevin Bacon, YouTube then suggested videos of teacup pigs and then autoplayed Mr. T and after that Mr. E Enigma, who we all know is just the alter ego of the Riddler, which led me to Fiddler on the Roof and ultimately to some very anti-Semitic videos by Alex Jones, which led me to PewDiePie. Now, to be clear, conspiracy videos and the constant controversy generated by some YouTubers are not the same, but they do both benefit from the same system. Recently, YouTube has made efforts to correct the problem and recommends conspiracy theories far less than before, and it temporarily suspended OAN from its platform for misinformation. But according to a study from the University of California, 
YouTube's progress has been uneven and continues to advance certain kinds of fabrication. So although they have nearly eradicated some of the most outlandish conspiracies from their recommendations like September 11th was an inside job, the earth is flat, and Zach has a normal sized penis, they still redirect traffic to other false conspiracies like climate change is a hoax, aliens built the pyramids, and I don't have a normal sized penis. But wait, do they think it's too big or too small? The wrong shape? Well, I guess you could. The consequences of the spread of this misinformation has been far reaching. In Brazil, YouTube's search and recommendation system appears to have systematically diverted users to the far right, resulting in a wave of extremist right wing YouTubers winning several seats, including their current president, Jair Bolsonaro. To test for the rabbit hole phenomenon in Brazil, researchers at Harvard conducted a computer automated study. The results were disturbing. Brazilians were disproportionately recommended videos from the far right, pro Bolsonaro bloggers, and conspiracy theorists. Members of the far right repeatedly told us that their political awakening began with a video recommendation from YouTube. And it's not just Brazil. Despite the FBI declaring fringe conspiracy theories to be a domestic terror threat, two QAnon supporters won House seats in the last election. And that is terrifying. But what it demonstrates more than anything else is the absolutely formidable power of this platform. It influences how you think, what you believe, and who you trust but only if you let it. Because YouTube's algorithm is just that, it's a piece of software whose sole purpose is to keep you watching and it will do whatever it takes for that to happen. It's not encouraging creators specifically to make videos about conspiracy theories or high drama. It'll be happy with anything that keeps you online. If human nature skewed toward rabbit ASMR videos, then that's mostly what we would see. So, you know, when you go online, don't just consume whatever it feeds you. Think critically, ask questions, and don't let your be manipulated. Because there's an immense potential for good here too! That same power that led you to believe that the government laser beams started the California wildfires was the same power that enabled the Ice Bucket Challenge to raise $115 million for ALS and increase its annual funding by 187%. And in 2011, YouTube played an instrumental role in the Middle East protests that became the Arab Spring by disseminating messages of freedom and democracy. Through this site, protesters were able to upload videos sharing their messages and political criticisms. Which is another amazing aspect of this place. I just spent an entire video criticizing YouTube on YouTube. And during a time when so many people are out of a job, I. I'm incredibly grateful to do what I love through a company that I built with my three best friends. I mean, this creative economy has opened up a world of opportunity for so many to earn an income both in front of and behind the camera and create a space for us who want to, you know, create. <laughs> and don't get me wrong, YouTube should absolutely address these issues by fixing the manipulative aspects of their software. But don't forget that you're not powerless in this situation. I know that this last year has been really bad and it's worn us all down and so many things seem absolutely insane and out of our control, but you do have a choice. Joeth Kareem and others may have been the ones to originally create this platform, but it's us, creators and the millions of people who are watching that made it what it is. This is our narrative, and for us, this coming year, we can decide whether we let ourselves continue to be coerced or manipulated, or whether we take hold of our choices and make them consciously. And that's pretty much all there is to say. It's, it's real and it's amazing. <gasps>